How important is it, is it for leaders to have that entrepreneurial sort of oomph behind them? Massive. Right. Be a pain in the ass. Right. Set the pace, set the sense of urgency, because if you don't set it, nobody else will. Hey, welcome back to the Better Human Podcast. As we know, the podcast is about making humans better humans and demystifying the world of relationships, communication, entrepreneurship for your better life. Today, we're joined with Bob McDonald, Chief Executive Officer of Bond Brand Loyalty, a company that I know well and we get to work with, a wicked company. Bond is a global data-driven customer experience and loyalty management business with clients like Scotia Scene, Aveda, Visa, and many more Fortune 500 companies. Under his experienced leadership, Bond now employs more than 500 professionals across the globe, helping your favorite brands serve you better. In fact, you know, a lot of your loyalty programs that you're actually experiencing probably had a lot of your hand to do with that. Bob likes to roll up his sleeves, but he'll also roll out a great story, and he knows loyalty, and he's here to inspire it. Let's start the conversation by jumping right into it, the impact session as we get to know Bob and a little more about him. Bob, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Greg. Delighted to be here. You're a great leader. You run an awesome organization. You've got a ton of experience, and we're going to get to all of that. But where we want to start is a little bit around sort of what got got you there. Like, who is Bob? So, you know, in the first section, we got questions like, where do we fuck it up? And what's the mistakes we've made? And what are the stresses we've got to uh, go through? But why don't we start with something a little more recent, which is, you know, you're running a business during COVID times. You've had to pivot. You've had to adjust. You've had to create engagement. What's been stressful for you over the last year? I've actually banned the C word and the P word from my vocabulary in 2021. You can say it, but I'm, uh, I've removed it. Okay. The pivot um, word and the COVID word. Well, yes. Sure. Okay. So well, a few that, P words then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you, I, uh, highly stressful, uh, right. you know, spring time. Um, a lot of it, uh, just simply not knowing our fiscal year ends at the end of March, not knowing where our revenue is not, being able to see where our revenues were coming from, knowing our burn rate in terms of, of uh, salary and compensation and just all the costs that we had in, uh, going on and trying to do the right thing by our people, our clients, all, well, all while uh, getting good data uh, right. and trying to understand this. What is going on? What is going on? Um, you know, another word, unprecedented. Right. Uh, you know, by now it's precedented, but right. unprecedented at the time. Uh, really really made us almost like a startup in terms of orientation, focused on cash flow, focused on preserving cash, uh, trying to make the right long-term decisions while at the same time, uh, you know, supporting our teams and, and making good short-term decisions. Right. Difficult situation, right? Very Absolutely. difficult situation. For everyone. For everyone. But you're, you're, you're an interesting cat. You're, you're, you're cut from different cloth, you know? <laughs> so, you know, for, for me, and I'm kind of similar, which is, you know, kind of throw you in the jungle that might just be the best place for you to survive and do your thing. How much do you think the stressful, unprecedented, crazy time maybe actually was a perfect environment for you, your type of personality, to, to thrive, to double down, to grind, to do? Yeah, it's, you know, I think a crisis reveals character. It doesn't, it doesn't form character. It reveals character. Right. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty proud of how our team showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we... I think we were, you know, dealing with the uncertainty, uh, trying to put some certainty in, under the, into the uncertainty. Uh, I think it was exhilarating. It was fast paced. It was painful. It was traumatic. It was emotional. It was all of these other things, but it was alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and I think, uh, you know, how we show up in those circumstances is, is pivotal, mm -hmm. is critical. Specifically as the leader or just as well, just, just individuals in general? Individuals in general. And, uh, you know, I did answer the question with a we because I think how our team showed up. Right. Uh, bailing each other out at different times, helping right. each other through it. You know, I, I, I ended March being in quarantine because I contracted COVID. Right, I remember. Uh, while away, did all the, all the right things. Um, but, you know, people help people, part of my, members of our team are there to pick me up at different right. times. Uh, I think that's a pretty important element yeah. of it, too. I like the fact that you said we, and not a lot of people use the word we enough. Right. Right. And, and for me, it's a strong word around the company. Anytime someone says, so I did this, I want to strangle them. I'm like, yeah. fuck you, you did nothing. We did this. We as a group. We, 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 we. The independent or the individual might have contributed to, to, to whatever. Or they fulfilled a certain role. But it's all in the greater sort of community and effort. And I think that's pretty safe to say that's around your culture. That's who you, you are as a leader in your culture. I think the word I should come out most when you've made a mistake. Right. 
um, and the word we should come out uh, when we're having success. Sometimes easier said than done. Absolutely. Right. You mentioned kids. Can we go to kids for a sure second? Sure can. All right. So how, uh, you, you got kids and you got some kids in the business? I do. Right. So what's it like leading your kids in the business? I think both of my kids have been in the business for it. So my two eldest uh, kids uh, have been in the business uh, for just a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And my intention was, or my intention is to give them lots of opportunity to explore the marketing world as broad as that is. And then ultimately have them go off to do their own thing. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so gives them foundational elements. I think, I think the last you know, the audience segment that I'm particularly concerned about uh, through the, the, you know, the last 11 months uh, is people starting their career. It's very difficult to get momentum, very difficult to understand. And this is very task oriented. It's very difficult to get mentored and coached and, and, you know, really have heart to hearts with people in a particular environment where you're only communicating with them virtually. Right. So I think that is the thing that uh, I worry about for a generation, not right. just my own kids, and it's just highlighted in my own. Family. You know, kids, all these, this younger generation has a very difficult time right now in their careers. I mean, we come from a world of mentorship and coaching and leadership and involvement and face to face and, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, we've looked past, or in some cases, we look at kids in school today thinking, oh, shame, these poor high school kids having to deal with school. But man, I, I didn't actually think about the the twenty two year old starting yeah. their career or the twenty five year old. I got my full gamut, right? I got a nine year old is is working to socialize and understand, you know, human dynamics outside of his family. Got a, a daughter in grade twelve who's graduating, and this is kind of a shitty graduating right. environment. Twenty one year old who's in fourth year mm. university, and and then the two who mm. work uh, work at Bond, mm. um, and uh, you know it it you know. It, we all know what we're talking about when we think about somebody who who survived the uh, you know depression and you know puts cash under their under their mattress, right? That right. kind of cliche. Right. So, what is the cliche that's going to come out of this? I was about to ask you. Right. So that was a great sort of compare, <laughs> like reference or or, yeah. or or comparable, which is like we had our grandparents or in some cases parents grow up in what was called the the Great Depression. Right. right? It was really shitty times. Oh yeah. Right. And they grew up tough as nails. Right. Humble, community driven, like just supportive, no complaining, resilient. Yep. I worry about there was lots of easy money uh, yes. in the summer, right? Yes, for, yes. For, the, the government for teeth. some, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I worry about that. Why do you worry about that? Why? Because uh, of like the financial enti burden further, in the further future? Further entitlements, or? further entitlements. So, further. so, so it's not the, the debt no, that, no. that we are in the country. No, it's the psychology. It, it's the psychology yeah. of the, the, wow. Yep. Man, I agree with that. I don't, yep. Wow. My, my philosophies my philosophies on government, which are probably not right for this show. Are, it's perfect for the show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, no, I believe government, yeah. It suits the government to have this type of arrangement and yeah, conditioning. Yeah, it suits, it suits them to pay the voters. Right. It's the, that's the quick, you know, okay. distilled uh, extraction of the whole thing is you're basically paying for future voters, and right. I worry about that. right. Where else do you think it's going to affect us? Do you think kids are going to have the the um, the grit to earn, or or well, an observation? You know, here's a here's a positive observation uh, or a positive thought over mm -hmm. found over the years would be um, I think you, you've got people who come from uh, from privilege who are heavily and I, it's a word I mm -hmm. like, but mm -hmm. heavily driven towards success and independence and accomplishing great things I outside you, of the, the, yeah, the silver exa spoon exactly uh i think you got kids in that environment who who don't strive for more mm -hmm. and then i think conversely i think you've got kids who've grown up with less uh with not as good fortune and uh they strive to accomplish all kinds of great things and doing it the right way and i think uh, you know generally speaking i think there are people of all sorts in all elements of our society um and uh you know, our job is to, my job is a, as, a, as a leader is to bring out the best in all people. Right, um, right. Who are in my orbit or in my environment. You don't have to answer this, but this will be the last question before we move to the next section, which yeah. is, you know, what are you scared about for your kids in the future? Well, I'm concerned about tax burden. I'm concerned about uh, an environment that doesn't necessarily stimulate innovation and, uh, you know, desire to, to achieve more. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, 
to grow something, to take risks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I got lots of, I got, I've got worries about xenophobia. I've got worries right. about, uh, you know, national interests coming first and foremost versus any sort of global sense. Right. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, scary times. There is. Scary for sure. times for, for our sure. parents, scary times for us as Absolutely. leaders, scary times for us as business owners. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to move to the net. We're going to take a break uh, here from our sponsor, and uh, we are going to come back, and uh, I want to pick up from where we left off, which is, you know, what do we do to create these little kick-ass human beings so they could, like, kick ass in the future? Okay, just before we jump into the next segment, we're going to take a quick little audio break, and we're going to hear from our sponsor, The Better Human Program. The Better Human Program is a 10-week program that equips you with the tools to achieve success in every interaction with other humans. Learn assertiveness, effective communication, interpersonal skills, and take control of your life with the Better Human Program. Check out the link below for all the description information. All right, welcome back. We are here at the deep dive section. We're going to talk a little bit more from where we left off, which was what you had to do to start your business, which I love the story because most of us as entrepreneurs have taken massive risks. Yeah. So tell us about, and, and you took a massive risk. Like, I mean, you didn't, you didn't just start a small little business, you and a couple of people. Right. <laughs> like you took on like a, like a, you know, a monstrosity. So tell us about the story <laughs> Of one, and maybe how did you come about sort of this business? Like, why did you want to buy it? Why sure. did you want to take the risk to mortgage your house? Yeah. Uh, what What was that all like? Sure. Um, so, uh, I, uh, Bond is an organization that used to be called Merits Canada. Uh, seven years ago, we changed the name. Merits changed the name to Bond mm-hmm. uh, with our influence. Um, we... Uh, I had run, I had been president and CEO of the organization since 2001. I like to say that I almost made it 20 years as president, mm-hmm. but I hired a replacement for myself. Um, and uh, was given the opportunity in, in you know, 2014 to start to have discussions, 2014, 2015, to start to have discussions about uh, merits wanting to spin this element of the business that I'd, I'd had uh, leadership responsibility for for many years mm-hmm. um, off. And uh, so... You know, I, 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 I think, I, you know, as a side note, the message of don't assume anybody's story just by looking at them mm-hmm. applies everywhere. Um, so myself and uh, uh, so me and uh, five others, uh, leaders in the organization, six others, sorry, excuse me, uh, six other leaders in the organization mortgaged their homes uh, to take on significant risk to buy the organization that we cared for so deeply from its U.S. parent. Can, can Are you comfortable sharing the amount total debt, not what each person put in, but the amount of total responsibility? You don't have to. Uh, tens, and mil- tens of millions of dollars of debt. Between six of you were going. Between six of us, between, you know, what we put on the business and so on, right? Like right. It was a, it's, a, it's a significant, it was a significant uh, amount, of money. amount of money. For all of you. Yes. Like if it didn't go it right. It didn't mean we all had that much money, but. No, that's what I mean. Like if it, did, if, it, if it didn't go right, you guys were Fucked. Fucked. So like yes. it had to work. So that, and that was for, it, it, for myself in particular, that was uh, the year that I turned 50. Jesus. Um, and so, you know, that, that is a significant, uh, significant venture to enter into. No kidding. Because your runway is getting shorter. I mean, that's shorter, the thing about yeah. your career, which yeah, is right. the older you get, the less runway you the have. Runway. So, you know, the, the, the starting a business at 50 that's, yeah. There's a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, fail fast is not a great metaphor, not a great coaching tip at the age of fifty, right? Right, <laughs> right. right. It's good when you're twenty five. <laughs> yes, exactly, right. exactly. Right. Um, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, people ask me all the time, "How did you feel about taking on that risk and that debt?" And in all honesty, it was a, it, in a form, it was a relief. It was a whole new set of stresses, but now it was self determination. Now it was the ability to to do to do the things that we talked about for many years and we'd always wanted to do. And when we, while we were feeding a holding company far afield, uh, you know, you, there was lots of things we couldn't do. We couldn't really live up to our dream and our promise. Mm. Um, and so over the last five years, so November 5th uh, just passed was our, was our five year anniversary. Um, and, you know, there's been bumps in the road, there's been ups and downs, there's been all sorts of things that have gone on currently, including the current uh, unnamed uh, circumstance we're talking right. about. Um, but uh, I'd take those stresses any day over, yeah. over the ones. Uh, what advice received. would you give to someone either wanting to buy a business or start a business? Like, how do you know it's the right decision? How do you know it's the right buy? 
I would, uh, so the, the recommendation would be different in my 20s than it would be in 50s. Okay, right? so let's do the two, bo- uh, two, sure. the two sets of advice. Someone in uh, their 20s wants to start a business or, or buy a business, same thing, they got to right. invest time and money into it. What would the advice be and what would the lookouts be for? Pay attention to your people. Okay. Across the board, in any particular fashion, unless you're creating some completely automated, uh, machine-driven business, uh, pay attention to your people. Right. Um, and Even as like a young startup. Absolutely, absolutely. And maybe there's more forgiveness in your 20s for, for just, you know, it's just all about the tasks and what's in front of us. Uh, but, uh, you know, after years of being in business, the pay attention to the whole person. Pay attention to, you know, what's going on in their world. I think I think we've all had our attention drawn to that mm-hmm. uh, in recent circumstances. But I'll, I'll tell you, that is the number one thing. Um, right. And... Uh, so if you're buying, a, if you're starting a business, pay attention to who you're adding. Be careful who your partners are. Partners are like marriages, right? Yes, exactly. I actually, I interviewed someone recently and they said uh, he's in uh, private equity. Uh, wicked, wicked, wicked dude. Um, he said one of the most important things we do when it comes down to partners is we go through the whole business transaction. Uh, transaction and the last, the last tipping point is we meet their spouse. Yeah. It's a good one. Because if we don't meet their spouse and like you don't know who the spouse is, because that's, again, part of the partnership, uh, it creates problems later. Oh, yeah. Completely. Right? Completely. Okay, so know your partners. Yeah, know your partners, know your people. Right. Um, I, I mean, admittedly, in my, in my story, I had the advantage of buying a business that I knew everyone intimately right Right. like i knew i knew this business uh intensely right um yeah lots of variables to it still and is the business more successful today than it was when absolutely right like you took it to another level absolutely right and was it the the freedom of not having to report into or like you know come back to the holding company that allowed you to do so um i'd say there was a part of that we had a lot of latitude but there's just something about trying to just manage to you know, as a, as a Canadian subsidiary of a U.S. or, or any other business, right. you spend a lot of time defending our differences, our, you know, w- you know, if this year we didn't hit our objectives, next year is going to be great. It's all about the hockey stick. Right, right. Um, and um, it just, you know, it, 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 it you, you don't really invest in the business after midway through the year because it's going to impact your final numbers. Like there's just a bunch of things. And, and to, to Merritt's credit, they did try to mm-hmm. kind of figure out ways through that. Yeah. But the humans, the human. You so, know, so let me ask you this yeah. as a, as a human, cause I hear what you're saying, which is like, until it was mine, like I performed, but I performed into, to what I was expected to. But the second it became mine as an entrepreneur, yeah, and that's kind of what we talk a lot about here on the show is around entrepreneurs, which is what makes the difference between a leader and an entrepreneur. And I think you just kind of nailed it, which is a leader, you're an amazing leader. Right. But until it was yours, right. until you saw that, like, you know, I'm never satisfied, like I'm always hungry, right. I want to drive, you weren't driving the business to what it is. So on that point, how important is it, is it for leaders to have that entrepreneurial sort of oomph behind them? Massive. Right. Be a pain in the ass. Right. Set the pace. Set the sense of urgency because if you don't set it, nobody else will. Right. And stuff will take much longer to unfold. Um, I can imagine my team watching this and laughing. (laughs) (laughs) And I've actually thought, you know, in business, uh, what, you know, when does complacency set in? I have had not one element of complacency set in with me. I yeah. just am, I am restless. I, I am, uh, I'll speak I for a mm-hmm. second. And, you know, if you had my team here, they'd talk no, about no, their no, own No, 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 we'll go with I. This is the Bob show right, right. now. Yeah. <laughs> the money is not important. Right. It's, it is, I mean, it is important, but it is a measuring stick. A, a boss of mine once said it's a measuring stick. Uh, all of the other ingredients, uh, you know, what is our potential I, I refer to it as return on effort. Like so right. much of what I think we can accomplish as a business is just because everybody works so bloody hard right. within Bond to do great work. Right. The return on that effort is sometimes less uh, because we, you know, you put, stuff you, doesn't unfold the way it's supposed to and, and uh, right. otherwise. Um, so, I mean, I, uh, the, the, the potential of this organization is massive truly a world-class organization that just just a few things need to click into place and and away we go and provides tremendous career opportunity great success for our clients drives business outcomes all of that 
you know, I talk a lot about it, and I'm sure you, I think, in fact, I know you, you think this way, which is the bigger the pie, the bigger everyone's Absolutely. piece gets. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? What's important when building a culture? I mean, you talk about passion right now. You talk about people, like everything. And I know your business well, or not, not your business well, but I know your business and I know your culture. And I would agree with that. People are committed. Yeah. And I'll even add in like they're fucking committed. Yeah. Like people, people don't work for a paycheck. Yeah. Money's important, but like people are, are, are grinding because of the community, the belief, the connections, the shared purpose, the, the relationships. Like, can you create that or does that just happen? Like, it it just, requires constant attention. And, and, you know, we've, we've hired lots of new people, added lots of new people to our organization over the last uh, year uh, and leaders and sometimes it's hard to understand how, how they're cascading those same kind of cultural uh, elements because it's, it's really small, nuanced things that actually takes it one way or the other. It requires the person in my job to be completely dedicated to it. Right. It can't be something that's outsourced HR or outsourced. It needs, it needs lots of attention. What type of personality do you see succeeding in your role? This is where my mind is much more open. I think I, somebody mentioned to me the other day, God, people are so good on their feet at Bond. People are so good presenting on the stage and so on. And I'm really proud of that. I love that in people. But not everybody is comfortable with that. And so what I've understood over time is there are all sorts of different styles that could be successful. Um, there are uh, like a very measured approach uh, can often be much more sincere than my fast-paced, some you know perceived by some as glib approach to things. Um, I think the ability to set a pace is absolutely critical, no matter what. Right? You, like you're at the you're at, you you've got to set the sense of urgency. Um, be be understanding and uh, where people are not able to deliver against it, but set a pace that sets sets goals and and has us and as an people. organization moving forward. So on that, let me ask you this question. How important is it for you to be the personality that just keeps pushing people to that edge? Well, I think I, uh, I think there's different approaches that could be equally as successful or more successful that we'd be not quite as pushy. Um, and what I mean, not like actually physically, like, like, no, like I know, but I'm, parents, a, I'm but, accused, but, but, but just, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, like, uh, Keeping people on their toes, you know, always, yeah. always stretching the the potential. Yeah, I think I think where I have where I have not done a great job, many many places I haven't done a great job is is consistency and follow through that then sets a course for everybody else that consistency and follow through matters. Mm -hmm. My moving on and moving fast can tend to, you know, hoping other people are going to have the consistency in behind can sometimes be challenging. All right. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to get into the final section uh, and talk a little bit about sort of uh, the better human takeaways. So your advice for the world moving forward, your kids, younger generations, Great. leaders, what should we do and shouldn't we do? Yep. So we will be awesome. right on back. Okay, just before we jump into the next segment, we're going to take a quick little audio break and we're going to hear from our sponsor, The Better Human Program. The Better Human Program is a 10-week program that equips you with the tools to achieve success in every interaction with other humans. Learn assertiveness, effective communication, interpersonal skills, and take control of your life with The Better Human Program. Check out the link below for all the description information. All right, welcome back to the final part of the show today. It is called The Better Human Takeaway. The objective of this section is to give expert advice uh, to someone who is pursuing the same career or looking to move forward or just moving up in the world. So uh, we're going to start with our signature question. There's two questions that we have, main questions, and then I'm literally just going to read these other questions to you. So question number one, what does the word better human mean to you and how do you think we could all achieve it? If we could all be better versions of ourselves, the best versions of ourselves, and constantly, and it's an overused term right now, we can all be better. Right. But if we can strive for growth and self improvement um, in concert with other people around us, I think we could create an environment of better human. 
Um, right. I, you know, everything, you know, the stuff you're talking about, Greg, it falls right into what Bond is all about, right? We chose our name because of the interconnection between people. Connection, yeah. Um, and we believe that the bonds between people is what will make the world even a better place. Right. Uh, positive bonds between people. Right. I thought about this with the notion of loyalty too. It's got to be positive loyalty, right? It's right. got to be. It's got to be not the paid idea, loyalty, not paid loyalty, and not you know on a negative uh, you know against other people sort of loyalty. Um, I uh, I love the expression. Um, I think it's something we can all strive for. It doesn't set an unrealistic goal for any one individual. It it's just basically saying how do we all make the incremental adjustments or the adjustments that we're capable of making uh, to get there. How important is it for us as leaders and business owners and companies to take some responsibility to teach this, to coach this? Yeah, I, like we I, get, we're getting dysfunctional fucking people coming oh yeah. to work, right? Yeah, like, yeah, how, yeah. how much do we, how much responsibility do we have to to contribute to that? So I have, question? I have always viewed it as like if you were if you were to track the uh, the advances of business, and I, you know, I I hate the characterization of business leaders as being these cold hearted for profit people. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I hear, you know, you're either for the health and safety of people in a lockdown or you're for profit. That's just not true. Right. It, right. There's there's lots of middle ground um, in that. Um, I actually believe uh, that the organization plays a role in modern society. The business organization plays a role in modern society that is quite significant. Lots of people meet their spouses at, at, at the workplace. Lots of people find their purpose at the workplace. They're inspired to do something even greater in the workplace. And I, I have got a strong belief that, that uh, business leaders have the potential to enable and equip people to be the best versions of themselves. Uh, a lot of the change that we've had underway at Bond over the last year has to be to create an environment where we can bring out the best, the people can do their best work. Uh, which to do your best work, you need to, uh, you know, be at peace. You need to be right. Like you need to have all sorts of yeah. other things. Connection, care, share connect. purpose. Yeah. I got a know, best friend like, at work. I've right. Got, right. Right. And uh, I believe very, very strongly that that's the key to bond. To, to bond. And I actually believe that it is, uh, it is the role of business in society. You know, the, 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 the small village doesn't have that same function. The Qantas Club doesn't do it. The union maybe doesn't do it. The, you know, the, all of the different types, the, 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 uh, some churches maybe don't do it but same, to the same extent they right. used to. Well, what is the common ground? What is the small village that people can belong to? Well, now it's the business. Right. That's the group. That's the group. All right. So let me ask you another question. Um, what do you think people need to do and guys like you, girls like you, people like you, need to do to stay on top of their game. Learn from everyone. The easy, I'm not going to say Harvard Business Review right. and business books and right, TED Talks. Those are all highly valuable. I think the amount you can learn from just the people you interact with every day uh, is massive. Take an interest in individuals and their perspective on things, and you'll find that most of life's little secrets are right there in front of you. What are some important skills, competencies, capabilities that people need to really hone and work for the next two years? I'm really hoping for a roaring 20s, I got to tell you. Right? <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm going to stick with the same. I hope this isn't, the, the, my answers all circle around the same stuff. Uh, empathy. And what I mean by empathy is an understanding of other people's perspectives. Like it, it just, it, it astounds me the degree to which people are just closed to other other vantage points, other perspectives. And this is everywhere, by the way. This isn't, you know, don't, don't judge, don't judge me by, you know, my gender, my, the color of my skin anymore, or, or my, my age or my profession or whatever, right. any more than, uh, you want, you want to be judged that way. Learn people's stories, learn what they're about, learn to care, get their perspective, then decide whether you like them or not, or whether you agree with them or not. But, the, but there's a superficial element to, to too much that goes on in this day and age that I just, I, I think people have to dig deeper. And it is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. You know, you can gain all sorts of knowledge. You can read all sorts of articles on Reddit or anywhere else that gives you, a, gives you some knowledge, accurate or not, I don't know. But wisdom is the application of it. Well, same with individuals. Don't just, don't, don't stereotype, don't judge based on just a whole bunch of like, 
really superficial data points. Amazing. So on that note, um, where can listeners find Bond? Where can listeners find you? I think Bond would be maybe more of a... Yeah. Give us the details about Bond, the company. Well, there's the, a few things going on. So for, so, um, so Bond, uh, you can write to me at Bob at bondbl.com. Pretty simple. Um, we're, I'm working on a book right now. Uh, more details on that to follow. Okay, well, that's the second podcast. Once yes, the book there comes you go. Out. Uh, I'm also working on, a, on a, I want to apply many of the things we've talked about today and the, the notion of creating bonds about the, the ability to truly use empathy and understanding to understand what other people are looking for, not just what your own perception of what they're looking for uh, is all about. And I, we're, we're creating a, an institute of sorts that is going to be a not-for-profit that will uh, invest in you know, uh, practical business and academic thinking together to understand how to make the world a better place. Um, so that's something that's underway now. And we're hiring. We're looking for great people. We have been on a major hiring uh, boom for the last you know, six, seven months. Uh, and uh, we're looking for great people. Bob McDonald, you're the man, brother. Thank, Thank you. you so much for today. Nice was, to be here. Yeah, it was an amazing, amazing, amazing conversation. Thank you. And we definitely, once the book comes out and the next piece comes out, we'll have that next episode and then we'll take some lessons and chapters from your book. Terrific. All right. Pleasure to be here. It was awesome today. Once again, just in case you don't know who this guy is, this is Mr. Bob McDonald. If you want to know what it's like to create a successful company, to be a successful leader, to build a successful culture, this is a dude that you got to take a page out of his book from. If you liked today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, click that like button and hit that share button and we will see you next time. Hey, I'm Greg Witz. Thanks so much for coming and checking out the video. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. So I'd highly suggest that you click this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe and share.